Subscribe to James and Sheriff Dixon, you motherfuckers. It's recording. All right, so this is Fun Times the Sheriff, the season two premiere, and I'm we're back with the, the premiere with my friend Anthony Allen. We're discussing Christian Bale movies. So let's just jump right into it. Let's do a uh, Interstellar. So you want to kick it okay. off? Okay. Sure, Interstellar, great movie. Um, I saw it about two years ago, right around this time of the year, uh, around 2018 this time. Um, really, one of my favorite, like, you know, if someone asked me for a movie recommendation, that'd be probably in my top five. Um, excellent in terms of special effects. Um, excellent in terms of acting. You know, I, I love Matthew McConaughey in there. Uh, the whole accurate sort of portrayal or you know very as close as you can get to accurate portrayal of some of the physics with like 4d and time travel etc like you know that, that's really cool too so what about you james uh yeah it's one of my favorite all-time like science fiction movies that like it's the matthew mcconaughey is in there he's one of my favorite actors on uh the science and the, it's great they had a actual physicist like we were before we were talking about like they had an actual physicist on set to go over all the, the science stuff so that's part of why it's so great yeah how about the Matt Damon uh, I guess a spoiler alert but you know that, that scene with Matt Damon on uh, when they get to Mars and or not even Mars uh, just some, some planet I've, I've, yeah there yeah, was a, that planet that that's around the uh, black hole that they went to yeah right right that's the other movie that he's in, the, the Mars one, The Martian. That, that yeah, he's yeah. in The Martian, but, yeah. And I was going to say, he's wearing the exact same suit that he's that that he does in The Martian, too. And actually, that the planet that they go to doesn't look too different than uh, the weather we have right now. <laughs> yeah, that seems terrifying when when he betrays him. And then the, the frozen clouds, when they land on that planet too that that was a yeah, yeah it's great cinematography and the overall in the, in the in the movie yeah i think it's about it's about two hours you know almost three, well like, yeah with the bonus stuff there's a bonus like movie there's like with like three and a half or something hours oh wow i wanted to see that part yeah i, I didn't see the bonus but um uh I also say I, I, I also like the the different history like uh, where like the world we're living in was wrong when he was talking to um, the teacher about the, the daughter acting up in school. Right. Yeah, yeah. And it's funny how you know, he, uh, you know, their house is out in the middle, like in the middle of nowhere, like some farm and stuff. It looks like they're a bunch of rednecks, but really he's, you know. An astronaut and everything is really really cool. Yeah, like he's like one of the he's like from our generation too, and he's like one of the, the like apparently one of the last ones from our generation too, which was interesting to me. Like like apparently like like the dad wasn't from his generation; he was from the one before ours. Yeah, that's why he couldn't connect with his dad. He's the uh, Matthew McConaughey's character was like the apparently one of the last ones from our generation. There wasn't many of those people left. Mm-hmm. And then, then yeah, there I, was, I, oh, go on. No, no, you go ahead. I was gonna say then there was the aspect of the first like twenty minutes of you thinking it was gonna be like a ghost movie, like, with the daughter thinking her room was haunted, and then it, then it wasn't. Yeah, yeah. And then at the end, when he's sort of banging on the when he yeah. goes into the that room. Yeah, that Christian Bale made all by himself to make that that like whole book room. Yeah. Okay. I didn't. I didn't know he did that. That, that was genius. Yeah. 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 Now, my other favorite part, like I said, was when he was watching after that first time they went into their uh, pods, and uh, he was watching his family grow up in front of him. When they mm -hmm. when, the, when they the first problem arise when they went around the, the the planet with the black hole the when they didn't think they were gonna be in the pods for so long and then it was like ten twenty years or something and their kids all grew up without them. Was was Sandra Bullock in there too? Uh, no, it was the uh, Anne Hathaway who played the 
And half. I'm yeah. sorry. I get those two confused. They have similar faces. <laughs> yeah, and they have like the same kind of short, short uh, haircut. Brown hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And halfway. Yep. Yeah, Thank she, you. <laughs> yeah, she's the one that played the love interest and said that like love is the thing that like connects everybody through like each dimension or whatever. That's why she's hmm. looking for her father, who played the doctor, the main doctor they were looking for. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, he's, yeah, yeah, yeah. The the yeah the lead doctor that went on the first mission. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good overview of Interstellar. If, if people haven't seen it, well worth seeing. Um. Oh, you didn't you didn't talk about that about the what you did last time about the where he was traveling the first time and the he reached out and touched her the. Uh, you know what I mean? Um, when they were traveling through the wormhole. Yeah, yeah. The uh, oh, I forget the name for it. I, I remember the name last time. Enters into the. Ah, oh, it's gonna <laughs> kill me. I'll probably remember, like ten minutes into the future. <laughs> um, I'm gonna I'm gonna. I'm gonna shoot. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, uh, well, we can we can move on to the the procedure if, while we were talking about that. If you remember, we can, we can just jump back into that. Sure. All right. So the, that was interstellar. So this another great um, Christian Bale movie is the Prestige, and um, like I was saying, it took me two two watch throughs to watch this one because there's this one's like a like a a page turner because, yeah because um it turns out that he's a clone towards the end a nikola tesla clone pretty much like this is like science mixed with magic movie yeah <laughs> but uh it, that was that was yeah. probably my favorite twist was him turning out to be the uh, clone because that would that was the thing that made most sense of because he killed the person in the very beginning and then he could not remember him doing it throughout the rest of the movie. Yeah, my favorite part is just like the how the rivalry between the two guys, uh, Jackman and uh, Dale grows uh, about the, the like you know when, when their tricks get more and more complicated and more and more dangerous. Yeah, because he wants to go just... further and further. Yeah, because he because he still doesn't know he's a clone, but like you know something's a, a rise like halfway through the movie when he keeps visiting Tesla. Yeah, you know every time I thought that okay they can't top that one, they just new, new trick that tops it. Uh, uh, and you were saying like like the combining the magic and science like in a way it's actually true like uh, how back then magic would be considered a type of uh, science. Oh yeah, just like that. Um, the, the quote is that the, the most advanced technology in someone's day oftentimes feels or seems like magic. You know, you can think of like I don't know. You think of your grand parents when they heard about the iPhone or something like that. It just like it seemed sort of magical. To them. Yeah. They were probably around when the, the light bulb was invented. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I was going to say one of my other favorite storylines was like after he dies like he was with one wife and then on um, throughout the movie he gets another one because he stops losing interest in her and starts forgetting things with her and the wife points that out the first one right so I, I just wanted to point that out like uh like like oops, I want to say the 40 minute mark when he starts getting more and more involved with his tricks um the Hugh Jackman one the the, the clone one he starts losing interest with his wife and then uh gets another wife but still sticks around with his wife and she doesn't know about this but uh yeah, he, he like starts forgetting things about her, so he like starts losing interest in her, but still loves her at the same time. So he gets a different wife. Mm -hmm. I think the special effects in there were really good. Too. Yeah. Um, not not quite as good as like Interstellar, but 
also, I mean, in Tesla's lair, Tesla's like laboratory is really well done, and you get a real feel for like late 1800s, you know, Victorian style, uh, I guess, architecture and, mm -hmm. and, and culture and stuff like that. I think it's it's a really good uh, example of. I think it was well researched in terms of how people dressed and spoke and that, you know. Acted towards like yeah. ma magic, yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, a lot of people, you know, that's like the time when Houdini was really big. Like, people were really into magic shows. Mm hmm. That, that, that was like at the peak of like, like, yeah, you know, mid 1800s, early. Night. Yeah, that was like at the peak of like uh, circus stuff. Like they were talking about circuses in the beginning too. Like that was like the peak of like all the traveling stuff. Yeah, B Barnum and Bailey, exactly, exactly. I'd say it's you know not not maybe mm, maybe I like Interstellar a little bit better, but I think the Prestige. Um, I think the Prestige has yeah more of an element of mystery. Of real like mystery. Yeah, like like like, like I said, I, I I could like enjoy watching Interstellar, but like yeah, the prestige is something that will keep you like like you know guessing until like 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 the very end. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I guess with that, um, would you like to do the Inception or the Dark Knight next? The Inception one was the, the dream one. Yeah, Inception is the dream one, which I haven't. Seen seen, uh, maybe I've seen bits and pieces, and I've heard of a lot of things about it, but we can talk about that, or you can talk mostly about that, um, I just know it's like a psychological thriller, you know. And the Leonardo DiCaprio is, is the one that was uh, in that with, with, uh, I want to say it was Ellen Page who plays the, the girl? Right. Right. Uh, uh yeah. We were gonna have a talk about uh, DiCaprio in the future. Yep, the, yeah, the, yeah, because he does a great, great movies. Uh, but um, uh, yeah, DiCaprio, um, he pretty much um, he does what the, the Rick and Morty episode does. He goes up like in a dream, within a dream, within a dream, and like um, uh, he, there's the like I was talking about. There's a scene towards the end that like controversial because there's a spinning top that he brings it around with him from his uh, wife in that movie, and he spins it, or uh, I should say, um, the guy who plays Batman's lawyers in this, uh, Batman's uh, butlers in this movie, um, he spins it, and that's supposed to tell if it falls over, he's uh, awake, and if it doesn't, it keeps, if it keeps turning forever, he's uh, supposed to be asleep. So, the movie ends with that on uh, the uh, top, and apparently, I looked this up, apparently, um, Christian Bale took several takes to get it so he that to keep it spinning while he filmed it so that way he didn't have to do any effects to make it look like he uh, it was an internal thing so he actually spun that top multiple times to um, keep the uh, top spinning mm -hmm. so um, that that's one of the reasons why it, he's one of my favorite actor uh, directors uh, because of his practical stuff and um I do want to say that uh, the guy who plays Batman's lawyers, uh, not his lawyer, I keep saying lawyer, um, uh, Alfred, uh, his butler, uh, is I think in almost all these movies except for uh, The Prestige. I didn't see not I did not see him in The Prestige. You know, another Christopher Nolan movie, and I know we we don't have to talk about him. Just another good one is Dunkirk. I don't know if you saw that one. It was no, World no, you you mentioned it to me, but I'll probably have time after this tonight to watch it. I've been recommended that multiple times by people as Dunkirk is wasn't that one of the yeah. ones that was shot like in like one frame or something I'm it might be um because I heard there it, was, it there was a, a war movie that was shot in one frame I think that was it you know, what, you know what I mean right like like without doing jump cuts like all, it was all shot in one still yeah I'm, I'm not exactly sure about that, but it it was unique. It, it did seem like unique cinematography to me. Uh, well, we're talking about Inception. You can talk about that after we we were to since that's a movie you've seen and not a movie I haven't seen. That's Christian Bale. Yeah, yeah, I, I guess so. <laughs> but um, 
Uh, yeah, that, like I said, that's pretty much the, the Inception. Um, I I just watch it over break, so it, it, it still holds up. The only thing I have to say about it is they repeat themselves multiple times, and every time they go into a dream, they have to repeat themselves, because apparently they forget when they go into a dream, because it's like a new reality, pretty much. So that, that that's pretty much the Inception. Pretty oh, much. yeah, and we... And we were, we were talking about um, how it produced a lot of memes back when it came out, like a lot of Inception memes about dreams and dreams, and <laughs> you'd say some word, then you add Inception to the end, it would become a meme. Yep. Yeah. All right, all right. I guess with uh, that, um, you can talk about Dunkirk, since I talked about a movie you, you haven't seen, you can inform me on Dunkirk. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say Dunkirk, especially if you like history. So Dunkirk was a uh, yeah. You know, history is my favorite subject. And oh, for sure. Yeah. So in uh, in World War Two, the British found themselves at this um, little town in uh, I believe it is either Belgium or the Netherlands um, called Dunkirk. Uh, excuse me, France. Sorry, not 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 Netherlands or not Belgium, but France. Essentially, they were trying to defend France from, you know, the Nazis, but they got forced off of, uh, forced out of Europe, and so they had to evacuate from Dunkirk across the English Channel back into England. And essentially, the story is just, or the film is just recounting from various points of view, like the Navy, the Air Force. Soldiers on the... The soldiers on the ground. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, civilians, etc., like how this monumental evacuation to get the British troops safely back into England happened. Um, and, I don't know, just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful cinematography. Like, the, the shots of... The aerial shots from when, like, they go from the point of view of the, uh, the Air Force are some of the, like, really, really some of the best film... I don't know, panoramas that I've seen, just of, like, the English Channel, and very beautiful. So, and there's, oh, oh, go ahead. oh, there's there's also elements of, like, betrayal, because there's, like, I won't spoil it, but there's, like, this French soldier who's kind of a, kind of a traitor, and, yeah, there, it's, um, just a great, like, you kind of know what happens because it's history. Yeah. You know they they you know they eventually get off, but he do, Christopher Nolan does a great job of like still building suspense. Also, Harry Styles is in it. The uh, the pop. Oh, star. I remember it being big because of like it was like right after he like left the band too, right? Like something. Yeah, like that. yeah, yeah. Harry Styles. I think he's the pilot. I think he's mm -hmm. the pilot character. So I did look it up. It's not that movie. That's the one shot take movie. It's 1917. That was the, uh, the one. Yeah, that one I have to see. My grandpa really recommended that one for me. Yeah, that was. I'll, I'm. I'm gonna want. I'll have to add both of those to my. Yeah, that was 1917. That they shot all in like one take without taking a break during that movie. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah. I guess with that um, we can just jump right into our last subject. We, we re cool. Which is, which is um the uh, the dark night and you said well you since we did discuss it a little bit um that you you did not see the first one but you did see the uh the last two yes yes I, I mean I know about the first one kind of from the flashbacks from the third mm, he's, uh, he's the the third one has Rosal Ghoul's uh, daughter who is the one who trained Batman yes. Uh, uh, and like I said, Heath Ledger, the second Dark Knight, probably the best of the Dark Knights. Oh, I mean, I think Heath Ledger's the best Joker of, I mean, of all the film Jokers. We talked about, uh... Like what he know, did how to, he, yeah, how he locked himself in a hotel room when they were filming this movie for, like, several months and got into the role. Yeah, like, he literally became the Joker, and it ended up, uh, you know... Costing him his being life. Right, right, yeah. Yeah. Right after he filmed the scenes, like, it pretty much cost him his life. So, I don't even know if you're watching the acting. That's that's the, the scary thing. Uh, 
the line between acting and reality is so is so blurred with Ledger's character. Uh, that, that's why it's that's why it's like like even if you watch it today, even though it came out like that came out right 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 when you like started a high school the the second Dark Knight. Like even if you that's like which was ten years ago. You, even if you watch it today, that's why it's his acting and that is like so bone chilling. It's like how he merges the uh, the character. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, also for the time, excellent special effects with, like, the city of Gotham. Uh, oh, that truck scene that he did with, uh, the, the, did you know, um, he actually crashed that truck that the, the Joker was in when he, did you know what I mean, when he was chasing the Joker through the tunnel with the, uh, the truck, he, uh, he actually crashed that truck, he actually flipped it. Oh, wow. I did not know that, so he had to do that stunt? No, uh, I don't know if the actors actually did, but like, the, he actually did flip that uh, the the truck onto that street. Yeah. Wow. We got to do an episode on stuntmen because those guys are crazy. I don't know oh, how they. Yeah, get... we got. I got to dedicate an episode <laughs> to stuntmen. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'd say in terms of story, like storyline, the. I don't know, I think Batman's interesting, don't get me wrong, but I think in terms of storyline, this might be the weakest of the films we've talked about, because it's kind of just like, him straightforward, good guy. The, versus, yeah, him going around right. fighting the Joker. Yeah, good guy versus bad guy, you know, there's a love interest, it's it's classic, it's like not bad, it's oh, just um, not... Oh, uh, Two-Face is set up in this, and I like the, the actor, I, I agree, who also plays Two-Face is great. Yeah, the origin story for Two-Face, is a re that's actually a really good plot development. I for, I'd forgotten about that. That might be the most complex and interesting plot development of the whole film. I mean, he was pretty much like Batman, but he, like, turned into evil in this one. Well, he was a, he, Batman's biggest supporter. Like, he was, you know, he stood by him when the press and, like, other people were uh, angry at him, and then yeah, at the very end, he gets he just, you know, he feels betrayed. Yeah, because of what the Joker did. But, yeah. Uh, like and I said, oh, yeah, you can go on before because I was going to talk about the next one. You can you can go on. Oh, I'm just you know the last thing obviously is like the pencil trick. Everyone remembers the the pencil tricks. Scene. Every now and then, yeah, we see uh, a couple of our friends post the memes on Facebook about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say that nobody. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I was going to say the last one though. The, the last one was about Bane. Like Catwoman and all all of that. Like uh, I I know the main problem was they couldn't hear Bane talking half the time. I was born in the shadows. <laughs> but uh, it, that's pro. Uh, I didn't have a problem. Like I, the main thing I think that was more of an action movie than anything compared to the other one. Yeah, I, I did. Yeah, there was. It felt more like a Marvel, like Avengers movie than... Yeah, because they were trying to close the... the Christopher Nolan knew he had three Batman movies, and I, you can kind of feel that uh, it, that was supposed to be a close. Okay. Yeah, it was... You know, it was a great... Great fun to watch. Great special effect. So, yeah, we were just talking about the uh, Last Dark Knight. All right. Yeah, I was just saying, it's a good film, good special effects, and I said it's always fun to watch superheroes beat up villains, and you know they're going to win somehow, even if it doesn't seem like they will, but mm -hmm. Batman's not my favorite superhero. I don't think he's that cool superhero. Well, you wanna get, you wanna, well we're, we're about to reach the half hour mark. Do you just want to go down to that route now? Um, then Batman is better than Superman. I mean, first of all, DC is not as good, but as of Marvel. the D yeah, of the DC superheroes, Superman is the best. Batman is a loser. Uh, he's like the Iron Man of, of DC, to be honest. Pretty much, he kind of is, but Iron Man doesn't look up all the uh, everybody's uh, weaknesses that, but Batman did. So he knows how to kill every single people in, in the DC universe. Uh, I don't know. I feel sorry for Batman. Yeah, you know, he's got a butler, but you know he doesn't have love, and 
uh, he's all got the, the suit. All, all the side, like, all the Robin sidekicks apparently eventually die too at some point. <laughs> oh, that's that's really sad. In the comics, yeah, apparently he like replaces all the Robins at some point, or they all eventually leave and become their own superheroes. You got to think that like after like a couple of Robins die, you kind of just stop doing that. <laughs> but but he's a billionaire playboy. Uh, philanthropist like like uh, Iron Man. <laughs> the worst the worst super I just like how we like disagree on the superheroes like you hate Iron Man but like Captain America you hate Batman but like Superman Yeah Superman and Captain America now those that those are two superheroes. But Superman's pretty much a god. Batman's just like a normal dude like somebody could just be Batman right now pretty much Jeff Bezos could be Batman <laughs> you gotta get your sponsorship by Amazon you gotta <laughs> watch Jeff Bezos be a secret listener and be like sponsored Jeff. <laughs> Jeff Bezos listen to my podcast <laughs> Before we end it, I do have to say we did just reach a 400 tonight subscribers. All right, now if you get to 500, you're going to eat the hottest chip. Yes, that's the that is the goal. So, um, yeah, I guess with that, I'm gonna bring a close to this podcast. I'm gonna, I, before I end it, I, do you want to have any last things to say? I'm not gonna cut you off like I did last time. I'm gonna rank. The, I'm gonna rank the movies. Um, in terms of my personal preference, not, you know, this is just personal, but for me, one, Interstellar, two, Prestige, um, three, Dunkirk, four, all the Batman movies with, uh, you know, uh, Dark Knight, and then Dark Knight, well, the second one, and then the, the third one in that order. And then I haven't seen Inception, so I can't rank that. All right, so me, like I said, it would be Interstellar first, and then it would be Prestige, and then it would be the yeah, the Dark Knight trilogy, and then um, uh, what, what the other one was Inception. Oh, yeah, Inception. Yeah. Yeah, I mean Christopher Nolan, very good director, makes good movies. They're worth watching. Yep, and the the ones I picked were the ones that he considered his best movies, or like I said, his favorite movies, the ones that got him into directing. So, yeah. So I guess with that, this has been the season two premiere of Fun Times with the Sheriff. This is my first guest, Anthony Allen. He'll be back in the future. Oh yeah. So, I guess with that, I'll see y'all everybody in the next one. Right, um, I just want to shout out an amazing channel, uh, James the Sheriff Dixon. Oh, he's such a great guy, and he is super cool for coming to the show. I'm glad I got to meet him in person, and you should subscribe. <laughs>